As many of you know, Fujifilm released the X-T5 and the X-H2 cameras, which both feature their new 40 megapixel X-Trans 5 sensor. At the same time, Fuji released a list of lenses which they say are optimized for the new sensor, meaning that these 20 lenses will perform best with the new higher resolution camera. Now, this has unfortunately led to a lot of confusion regarding older lenses and how well they'll work with the new cameras and even if they'll work at all. I received a comment the other day on one of my videos from a gentleman asking me this exact question. Will the older lenses work at all on the X-T5? And he asked me this because he wanted to upgrade to the camera, but he didn't want to be tied into purchasing a more expensive lens. In another of my videos, one viewer was so offended that I tested the X-H2 with an older lens that he accused me of doing it on purpose to handicap the camera and suggested that I was secretly working for Canon to undermine Fuji products or something crazy like that. And really, it's Fujifilm who have caused a lot of this hand-wringing and confusion among the community by releasing this list in the first place because it's fueled this narrative that you need an optimized lens in order to see any real resolution jump. But do you really need an optimized lens? And do you even need 40 megapixels? How much better is the X-T5's 40 megapixel sensor over the older 26 megapixel sensor in the X-T4? Well, since I've been thinking about all of this, I decided to do a little test of my own using two lenses, one that is from the optimized list and one that is not. So I tested these two lenses on the X-T4 and the X-T5, and here's what I wanted to find out. First, do the older lenses that are not on the optimized list perform better on the new camera, or are you getting results that are basically the same on the X-T4 and the X-T5? And second, how much better do the optimized lenses perform on the X-T5 over the X-T4? In other words, are the optimized lenses noticeably better on the X-T5? And the answers I found really surprised me. After we review the images together, I'm going to give you my practical opinion and summary on all of this, and then also end the video by showing you a bunch of images that I've taken with the X-T5 and a variety of lenses, both Fuji and third party. Now, before we get into today's video, make sure you download my PDF for five portrait tips. Also visit my sponsors in the description below for discounts on gear, software, and more. Make sure to check out Dehancer Film Emulations, which offer awesome film sims with tons of editing control and use my promo code to get 10% off. Now, as with any test of this sort, there are always a ton of variables. For the sample images I'm gonna show you, I use the same aperture, shutter speed, ISO, white balance, and I shot them all in RAW. All of the camera's internal settings were zeroed out to keep it as fair as possible. And we're gonna review these images in Capture One. So let's look at some of these images together. All right, so let us review some of the sample images. So first we're looking at the X-T4 and the X-T5, and this image was with 35 millimeters. So this is the non-optimized lens. Now, Obviously, when they're zoomed out, both images are going to look great. But let's go ahead and zoom in on these guys here. Now, when we zoom in, you got to really zoom in close before you start to see a difference. But there is indeed a difference. And it's noticeable at certain parts of the image than, you know, more noticeable than at other parts. But check out, like on this lettering here, on this orange Annie Leibovitz book. You can see the X-T5 below is considerably more detailed and it just has more clarity to it. So there is a difference. So this should prove to you and me that even an old lens and the 35 millimeter, which is, you know, one of those lenses that is magical in its own way. Everyone, you know, Fuji lovers love that lens. It's not known for its best sharpness though. It's known more for that kind of overall magical quality. Well, you can rest assured that even that lens is gonna give you better results on the uh, X-T5. And now this is shot at F4. So I did stop down the lens a bit. And I think that around F4 is where you're gonna find the best improvement. Check out here on this photo, and even here you can see it's considerably sharper than the X-T4. So there is an improvement. Now. On this side, I noticed that there was less of a 
obvious, less of an obvious notice in the increased detail, although you can see it's still clearer here. And even on these, um, on the binding on this book, you can see a little bit more detail down here. So at F4, shot at the same settings, ISO 160, 125, XT4 above, XT5 below with the 35 millimeter original Fuji lens, you're gonna see a difference. So you're getting more out of it. So even the older lenses are gonna show you more. And I, I mean, I feel like this is sort of obvious, right? Because the resolution of the camera is higher. Yes, it should, should definitely be better. But I think with all of the optimized lenses, it kind of led to this idea in some people's minds that the older lenses aren't gonna work right or not gonna look better. You can see here on this book, this book uh, jacket as well, natural, this is definitely sharper. It's close and both of them look good. Color rendition and their contrast looks very similar, but it's definitely more detail there. All right, now let's look at the next image in my little series here. It's one of my other bookshelves. Uh, okay, so now we have the optimized lens. This is the 16 to 55. And both of these were shot at f5.6. Again, all the other settings were the same. If we zoom in here, you can see, if we get pretty close, there, the X-T4 is above, X-T5 below. You can see there is a considerable improvement in sharpness, in contrast, and even the color rendition is a little better. So if we look here at Lin, Lindbergh here on this, this book, you can see this, the edges are much more crisp around the letters. And then if we go even here on my X-T4 manual, if you look at the word Fujifilm and we zoom in ridiculously close, you can see that the 16 to 55 does uh, a noticeably better job on the X-T5 over the X-T4. Look how sharp the edges of these letters are, for instance. The color is slightly better. The contrast is definitely better. Everything looks better. Let's go over to my uh, lobe here. You can see it pretty clearly here as well. Check out the difference there. The X-T5 is really doing a better job than the X-T4 with the optimized lens. So there is a big difference here. There's a not a, a monumental difference, I wouldn't say, no, but a considerable difference. Let's look at Wicked over here, my little Ewok. You can even see in his face. It's um, the, the overall image from the X-T5 has more detail, but it's also more clarity. And the contrast is definitely better. The blacks are better. Like if you look in this little shadow area around his head here, it's a noticeable difference. Um, is it is it monumental? Not really, but I think it's definitely um, something that you can see. And, you know, it's, it's gonna make a difference, I think, in your images. Uh, yes, let's look at Commander Data here and his giant head. Same thing here, check out like around his eyebrows, around his hair, it's definitely sharper. When I looked at these images, I said to myself, yeah, that looks like really the lens that's optimized for the, um, for the new camera is definitely gonna make a difference. Now, obviously the 16 to 55 is a great lens in general too. So keep that in mind, it's a sharp lens to begin with. So I think that has a lot obviously to do with it as well, which we'll talk about a little later. Then I shot, you can see I'm a nerd because now we have Star Wars, Star Trek and um, everything else going on here. But putting that aside, now I shot the 35 millimeter at 2.8. This was handheld and this was sitting on my desk. And again, there is a difference. Like you can see that the X-T5, which is below, like if you look around the bridge, the details here, there is more sharpness here. And I focused right on the bridge here. Check it out. Now, is this a monumental life-changing amount of difference in the sharpness? I don't think so. You might think so, but I don't think so. But it is a noticeable difference, even at 2.8, you could see that the 35, the older 35, is gonna give you better results on the X-T5. Cool, I like that. Um, and then I have one more 
image here again of the enterprise but for this i stopped down and this was with the 35 at f7.1 and here you'll notice again there's definitely a difference like if you look at the edges of the letters look you can see it's definitely around enterprise and around the the registry number edges of the letters is definitely sharper and then you'll also notice that um, around these little imperfections in the paint you're getting a lot more sharpness now there you have it let's go back and talk about some of these findings now before i discuss my opinion on all of this let me just say that i'm far from the most technically minded person when it comes to lens tests and i honestly prefer focusing on the creative side of photography so I'm sure some of you will find flaws with my method and disagree with me, but I made it as fair as I knew how, and I also did not do this in any way to bash one lens or camera, but just to really see for myself what some of the key differences were. I own the X-T4 and the X-T5, so I did not do this in any way to bash Fuji, but just to kind of see what really the differences were. My biggest surprise was how good the X-T4's 26 megapixel sensor looks when compared side by side with the X-T5's 40 megapixel sensor, regardless of the lens that I used. For some of the sample shots, I couldn't even tell which was which without really looking close and at the data on the file. The difference in quality does become much more apparent, however, when stopping down the lens. So for instance, at 5.6, the 16 to 55 lens did yield considerably better results on the X-T5 than on the X-T4 with a noticeable improvement in sharpness, contrast, overall detail, clarity, and color. Similarly, when shot at F4, even the old 35 millimeter is noticeably better on the X-T5, although the differences weren't quite as vast. So Fujifilm is right when they say the optimized lenses will give you the most out of the sensor, but even the older lenses are still going to show a bump in the quality you're going to get from them, at least with the two that I tested. So now the question for me becomes, do you really need 40 megapixels and optimized lenses? And after reviewing my test images, I'm convinced that the need for an optimized lens and even the need for 40 megapixels is way overblown by most people. Although the optimized lens did in fact perform better and the 40 megapixel sensor does indeed show more detail, the differences were by and large not tremendous and highly dependent on the aperture that I used. So here's what I recommend. Instead of purchasing an X-T5 or an X-H2 based primarily on the up to resolution, you should instead base your decision on the broad range of features. For instance, for me, the X-T5's improvement in autofocus accuracy and overall speed was one of the main reasons I upgraded and definitely more of a consideration than the 40 megapixels, although I do like having that extra resolution too. Regarding lenses, instead of feeling tied to the list of 20 optimized lenses, my recommendation is to put that aside and research what's the best lens based on the kind of photography you do, regardless of whether it's on the list or not. Remember that lenses are usually long-term investments. So buying an excellent lens is really never a mistake. I've had some lenses for five, 10, 15, 20 years. And although the camera technology changes pretty quickly, an older lens that's sharp and contrasty continues to look great on the newer cameras. And as you research and decide what works best for you, my advice is to make the 40 megapixels as well as the optimized lenses just a part of your well-rounded research of what works best for you. Also, if you have older Fuji lenses, there's no reason not to upgrade the camera if you want the newer camera for any host of features. You're gonna get better quality, your older lenses are gonna work perfectly on the new camera, and there's really nothing to worry about. So before we wrap up this video, I want to show you some real images that I've taken with the X-T5 using a variety of lenses, because once again, it reminds me that it's not so much the lens and the camera, but it's really the creative eye and the use of light that matters the most. And I want you to be confident getting an X-T5 or an X-H2 if you're using older lenses, if you're using Sigma lenses, whatever the deal is, you're going to love it. So don't let the optimized lens issue stop you.
Well, that's all that I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this quick video and that you found it educational and enjoyable. Please drop me a comment below. Let me know what you think about all of this. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also hit the like button. Every single subscription really does help me to continue making videos and investing time into this channel. So I greatly appreciate if you've been watching my videos that you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Here's wishing you an amazing, awesome, wonderful day. Go out and take some great pictures and I will see you in the next one. Peace.